It is uh, Sunday, December 22nd, day after the winter solstice 2013. We're approaching the Unitarian Church of Montreal in uh, weather that has some uh, high winds and uh, freezing, or I should say frozen rain, also known as sleet. And uh, we are about to begin our alternative spiritual practice of protesting against Unitarian Universalist injustices, abuses, and hypocrisy, not to mention uh, some pretty amazing stupidity. So I just started the camera early just to sort of uh, show the weather conditions here. Right now it's actually died down. Oh, here's a nice gust. Um, so I'm just going to set up my picket signs. But basically got uh, fairly high winds uh, gusting here and there and uh, a certain amount of uh, sleet and uh, the Unitarian Church of Montreal uh, said that their uh, solstice uh, service would go ahead no matter what the weather so I guess my uh, protest will also go ahead uh, I think I have uh, pretty much the uh, same qualities as a postman even if I don't actually go postal with these idiots. Um, so that's it. I'm just going to uh, get a couple of picket signs. I guess because of the high winds, there's not much point uh, having any freestanding picket signs. So I'm just going to pull out uh, some of the more appropriate ones. And no, I think I'm going to use the, uh, the church that spits in good God's eye picket sign today for various reasons. One of them because it's close to the winter solstice and uh, there's a connection there. Um, Unitarian prejudice and bigotry. Yeah, that can stay for now. Uh, Church image tarnishing minister. We'll let that one go for now. Uh, you use censor and suppress critics? Well, yeah, they do, but uh, that's gonna stay in there. Unitarian perversion of justice. Sucks you, asterisk you. Yeah, that's very tempting. Unitarian bullying and bigotry suck you, asterisk you. Unitarian hypocrisy, yep, that's the one. So we're going to uh, display the picket sign that says uh, Unitarian hypocrisy and hubris suck you, asterisk you on one side and uh, Unitarian bullying and bigotry suck you, asterisk you on the other side because it is very apropos of uh, the overall uh, reasons for this protest and it actually complements or is complemented by the picket sign saying a church that spits in God's eye. Because if we go way back to the beginning of this uh, ludicrously drawn out uh, war of words, um, Reverend Ray Drennan back in uh, the fall of 1995 uh, falsely and maliciously labeled a interreligious event uh, called Creation Day as a cult, and more specifically a manipulative and secretive religious group, thus slandering uh, my efforts to uh, bring religions together to try and uh, care for this uh, creation. Um, Reverend Ray Drennan also uh, labeled my revelatory religious experience as your psychotic experience and uh, angrily insisted that I seek psychiatric treatment for my alleged psychosis. And that's where the uh, church that spits in God's eye bit comes in because I am in fact claiming that uh, it's not an accident that the uh, earth, sun and moon have uh, virtually identical apparent sizes when viewed uh, from our planet. And that when they come together in a total solar eclipse, it produces a visual effect that looks very much like the pupil and iris of an eye staring down from the skies. Uh, this is a fact. This is a readily verifiable fact. Whether God's responsible or not, um, anyone can take a good look at a good photograph of a total solar eclipse 
that shows the uh, sun's corona shining out around the uh, dark circle of the moon. And notice that it does, in fact, very closely resemble uh, pupil and iris of a symbolic eye of God staring down from the sky. So, uh, Reverend Ray Drennan, in uh, belittling and maligning my uh, claimed uh, revelatory experience regarding that uh, cosmic symbolism in the total solar eclipse, uh, which I have every reason to believe uh, is a kind of sign in the heavens that's there to remind human beings of God's uh, attribute known as uh, divine omniscience. Um, symbolically, metaphorically, figuratively speaking, Reverend Ray Dren and spit in God's eye. And uh, so did the Unitarian Church of Montreal in, uh, in approving and condoning of uh, Reverend Ray Drennan's uh, anti-religious intolerance and bigotry. Um, so, so that's where that uh, a church that spits in God's eye slogan comes in. And the connection to the uh, winter solstice is that uh, because total solar eclipses are a comparatively rare occurrence in any one place, although they can occur in succession in uh, fairly short time periods in one place as well. In other words, you can be uh, in a place where the oh. paths... What's that? Go home? <laughs> I say go home, go home to your principles and purposes, which you have made a total mockery of for uh, over 15 years now, my dear. Yes, go home to your uh, claimed uh, ideals, because right now you're very, very far away from them. <clears throat> so yes, this uh, ever so loving and compassionate uh, member of the Unitarian Church of Montreal loudly said, go home to me. And so I responded to that by uh, telling her to go home in a figurative sense. Go back to your claimed principles and purposes. Go back to your claimed ideals. Maybe even go back to your monotheistic religious heritage, which you have made a complete mockery of in the last several decades, if not the last century. So yes, uh, here we are. This is the uh, wayside pulpit of the Unitarian Church of Montreal. It says, we, not, we need not think alike to love alike. I spoke about this earlier. Um, so obviously I do not think alike with that woman. She obviously does not think alike with me. But she's hardly being uh, very loving when she tells me to go home, is she? In a loud and uh, obviously less than pleased manner. Um, so we'll talk more about that later, but I'm just going to continue my little uh, protest here and continue what I was saying, getting back to the winter solstice specifically. Um, because uh, total solar eclipses and the symbolism that they uh, actually display, symbolism that was in fact uh, noticed by ancient cultures and responded to in their uh, religious beliefs, um, these ancient cultures around the world transposed the uh, religious symbolism that is uh, perceivable in the total eclipse of the sun onto the winter solstice. Whether they were in the uh, northern hemisphere or the southern hemisphere, the uh, winter solstice was a day where the death and rebirth of the sun god was uh, celebrated. Um, and that's oversimplifying things a bit because this is, you know, taking the whole sun god idea literally, which no doubt some of the more uh, primitive ancient cultures did. But the symbolism is there. The symbolism is, is uh, readily perceivable. <laughs> a, less, uh, a less literal approach. Oh, check that out. <laughs> My sign just got blown. Uh, right down to the corner, right up into the tree, just to give you an idea of the uh, gusting winds here. So we shall uh, come uh, and get our sign. But yes, I, I sometimes like to joke that those uh, gusting winds are actually emitted 
from the Unitarian Church of Montreal considering how much of their claimed uh, principles and purposes have proven to be nothing but pure wind. Um, anyhow, getting back to uh, our little uh, monologue about the uh, symbolism that uh, is embodied in the uh, winter solstice, whether in the northern hemisphere or the southern hemisphere. Um, ancient cultures like the uh, ancient uh, Irish uh, builders of uh, megalithic uh, chamber tombs, as they're called, uh, such as Newgrange and Douth, uh, definitely saw the symbolism in the total solar eclipse and responded to it. Um, and there's clear evidence that they transposed onto the winter solstice the religious symbolism that is embodied in the rather more spectacular death and rebirth of the sun in a total solar eclipse. Um, there are compound sun eye symbols that are uh, carved into petroglyphs at Douth that basically are very, very comparable to drawings of total solar eclipses made by astronomers in the 19th century. In fact, there's one scientific uh, astronomical drawing of, I believe, the 1841 total solar eclipse that's uh, available to be seen in the uh, memoirs of the Royal Astronomical Society for that year, or perhaps in later years. Um, that uh, is almost identical to these ancient petroglyphs that are carved into what's called the Stone of the Seven Suns at Douth. Um, and Douth is aligned to the winter solstice sunset, the, the death of the sun on the winter solstice. Other Irish tombs or called supposed or, or claimed chamber tombs. They may not have been tombs at all. They may have simply been uh, religious uh, sites. Um, are aligned to the winter solstice sunrise, such as Newgrange. So the Irish definitely saw the profound religious symbolism, not only in the uh, winter solstice, but in the total solar eclipse. And as I said, because total eclipses, total solar eclipses are so rare, the uh, symbolism of the eclipse was made more regular by transposing it onto the less spectacular death and rebirth of the sun in uh, the winter solstice. The same thing can be said of what happened uh, in the southern hemisphere in terms of the Mayan, Aztec, Peruvian, uh, religious uh, symbolism and practices and so on. So yes, this is a church that spits in God's eye, literally, uh, figuratively. <laughs> not, not literally, actually, um, but definitely figuratively. And I should add, I should add that uh, this uh, spitting in God's eye that I'm talking about is it, I didn't even come up with that uh, concept. Uh, I'm actually, this, this pick a sign in my right hand that says a church that spits in God's eye is actually referencing an article headline in the Montreal Mirror, an article written by uh, Jackie Charlton about the beginning of my protest in the summer of 1998. This article appeared in the Montreal Mirror sometime in June of 1998, can't remember the exact date. Um, the headline title of this article was Spitting in God's Eye. So it wasn't even me that came up with this idea of Montreal Unitarians spitting in God's eye, to say nothing of uh, the UUA and the larger Unitarian Universalist religious community spitting in God's eye. Uh, it was in fact the copy editor, whose name I don't know, or maybe Jackie Charlton herself, who came up with this idea of spitting in God's eye in relation to how Montreal Unitarians responded to my uh, peaceful public protest against their anti-religious tolerance and bigotry. Uh, 
So, I think on that note, we're more or less going to wrap the, this little monologue up. Um, I have uh, camera difficulties, and one of them being that the camera automatically shuts down a little after 17 seconds into a video, even though it's supposed to go for half an hour straight. So I don't want to go past the 17 minute mark. We are now at uh, 15 minutes and 30 seconds. I got two more minutes, a little less. Just uh, one last time. Uh, oh, and I will mention this, yes. Uh, back to the uh, theme of we need not think alike to love alike. I have made it very, very clear to the UUA Board of Trustees and the new moderator of the UUA Board of Trustees, uh, Jim Key, there go my picket signs again, that uh, I believe that the uh, UUA needs to uh, officially apologize to me for uh, falsely accusing me of the crime of uh, blasphemous libel for allegedly making unfounded and vicious allegations to the effect that uh, ministers of the association engage in such despicable crimes as pedophilia and rape. Um, and I actually made it clear that it would be nice if uh, Jim Key apologized to me on the winter solstice yesterday, just for symbolic reasons, you know, the whole death and rebirth idea, the whole death of Unitarian Universalist uh, institutional stonewalling and uh, denial and uh, attempted cover-up, if not actual cover-up, of uh, all manner of clergy abuse. It didn't happen. Um, let me declare to Jim Key that I, I expect the apology to be delivered by uh, New Year's Day at the latest. And so uh, this is my reminder. Please apologize by January 1st. In fact, on January 1st. Uh, no need to apologize in between.